All right, you think we're you think we're good to start? Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, I said go ahead. All right, cool. Okay, so um, today's topic is computer music and digital audio. Uh, so the the idea is like these these weekend STEM sessions. Um, as you could tell by the name, they're meant to sort of talk about different topics in science, technology, engineering, and math, um, and how people use them in the real world. Um, and uh, we came up with this idea because uh, we want to kind of show that it's not it's not a hundred percent for career purposes that you might want to use, uh, you know, computers or technology or mathematics, science, and so on. It's not, you know, that's that's a big part of it is like to to um, people do it for their careers, but also the whole world is becoming digital and on the computer. Um, so anything you might wanna do, uh, the arts, um, things you enjoy, um, those also like having an, an understanding of um, the, the way that they're done on computers today uh, will help with that. Um, so yeah, this is sort of, um, it's still a technical topic, but the, the goal is to show you that like it can, it can be applied to creative uh, things as well. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, so the title is Computer Music Digital Audio. Um, it's kind of a broad topic, uh, so I'm not gonna go really in depth. Uh, it's like a huge thing, um, but the goal is just to show you that today in 2020, computers are musical instruments um, and to explain how, how that came to be. So uh, to start with, uh, we first have to kind of get to the basics. Uh, so like, what is sound? What is, what is it? I mean, we know we can hear it, but like, what actually is it? Uh, sound is a, it's a vibration that, uh, it's a vibration. Um, so like a set of waves that propagate through something. Uh, in most cases, when we hear sound, uh, the wave is propagating through the air. So uh, quite literally, the air is moving. Uh, a wave is like, moving the air uh, and it starts at some source and then it reaches some destination uh, and at that destination it can be like detected uh, and in our case that destination is our ears um, but it's not just air sound can also travel through other things like water like if you've ever been underwater and there's like a big sound you might hear like a weird kind of muffled version of it if somebody like yells at you underwater you can sort of kind of hear it uh, it can also like you know go through walls and stuff you can hear sound through walls so it's it's a wave uh, that can go through different materials uh, and this on the right is just sort of a visualization of what i mean in the middle middle is the thing that's generating the sound and you can see the wave like moving outwards um so that's 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 really how it uh, works so the slides are not uh going to the next one uh, you don't see the slide right now? I, but it's the first page. It's frozen on the first page. Uh, okay, maybe my screen, I need to refresh my screen share. Yeah. How about now? Yeah, now it's good. Okay, so uh, in case you couldn't see it, this, is, was, this was the image that I was talking about. Uh, in the middle, that's the the source of the sound. And then you can see the, the waves moving outwards and the little orange dots or whatever, that's the material that's supposed to represent the air uh, that the sound is moving through. Um, so, all right, so when we combine and organize these sounds like in a certain way, they make us happy. That's what music is. They make us feel, 
I mean, uh, it's, nobody really knows exactly why, but uh, certain sounds, when you combine them and put them in a certain way, people like it. Um, and uh, if, you, if you look here on the left hand side, it's just. <laughs> Sorry, I got muted. Okay, yeah. So, uh, can you still hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, on the left hand side, you see this image of an ear. Uh, so, just to briefly explain what happens is those these vibrations here, these waves, um, they hit the the things you have on the left and right side of your head, your ears, uh, and there's a little thing called an eardrum in there. And what the waves do is they actually make that eardrum vibrate. And then the vibrations are trans, you know, transmitted through other little small organs in your ear to your brain. And then your brain interprets those little vibrations. So it really, you know, it's waves all the way down. It's waves in the air, it's waves in your eardrum, waves in the inner ear organs, and then waves in your brain. Like th those waves are interpreted in your brain. Um, and if you look on the right here, this is just sort of a simple, uh, uh, this is a sine wave, actually, it's what it's called. Um, those of you who have, uh, you who have might have like taken a geometry class, you might have seen sine or a trigonometry class, I mean. Uh, but if not, this is just what a sine wave looks like. It's kind of a curvy wave with, a, with the same um, period or like the same distance between the top and the bottom every time. Um, so, when uh, when these waves are closer together, like when when this distance from this this peak to this peak is really small, uh, that's called a high frequency, and that's actually what creates a high pitch sound. So like, you know, a really high pitch sound, like a high for a person's voice who's really high pitched, or like you know, like a singer when they go really high, that the sound that they are making has a really high uh, what's called frequency. And then if you look here, like how um, the distance between the top and the bottom of this wave, uh, that's called the magnitude or amplitude. Uh, and what that is, is actually like how loud somebody is speaking or some sound is. Uh, the higher the magnitude, that's like the volume. Um, so, so, yeah, again, like again, I, I don't really intend to go too deep into the actual wave parts of this. It's, it's actually pretty complex mathematically. Um, but it's just so you understand, like all sound is waves that go through the air, and uh, our ears are an example of something that can take those waves and do something with them, which in, in our case is interpreted and we hear it in our brain. Like we hear music, we hear sounds. You hear my voice right now. So uh, going back to music, uh, how, do, how do musical instruments work? Like what, what makes them generate sound? Um, so, uh, they all work in different ways, but basically you do something mechanically, you do some movement or blow some air or, you know, make something move and then it, it generates that sound wave that we talked about. So like for a violin, you take this stick of horse hair, which we call the bow, and you draw it across these strings that are on this uh, slab of wood. And those strings vibrate when you, when you draw the hair across them. And so those vibrations in the strings generate vibrations in the air. And then that sound. Um, and then when you press down on the, you see the sort of like the black part up here, when you press your fingers down, that changes um, something about the, that changes the, like how tight the string is basically. When you push it down, it makes the string a little tighter. And then so when you draw the bow across it again, it's a different sound, it's a different pitch, a uh, different frequency. Uh, and the piano works actually in a very similar way, even though it's not obvious that a piano works that way, but when you press down a key, there's actually a string in the back of the piano and there's a little hammer that comes down and hits that string. Uh, and then similar, same way as the violin, those strings vibrate and then they generate, the air vibrates above the string. And then finally, there's like brass and wood instruments. Um, those you blow air through them and then because of the shape of what you're blowing through um, and like the shape of the opening, it makes a certain sound. And then you, again, you press buttons to change the shape of the thing you're blowing it through and it makes a different sound. Uh, so all musical instruments really are, are things that people figured a long time ago, people figured out how to make like a, you know, a piece of wood or a piece of metal or, you know, a, a bunch of stuff that when you press them in a certain way, it makes a certain sound. That's the definition of a musical instrument. Um, so, you know, like, 
as simple as a, a stick against a another like another piece of wood that's a drum right so anything that can make a sound is a musical instrument so uh just to review what we talked about so far sound is waves that go through the air our ears can interpret the waves and then the waves have some characteristics like pitch and volume like um how you know the pitch of these and if, if you if you don't understand what i mean the pitch i mean like you know um if i talk like this that's a high pitch if i talk like this that's a low pitch so pitch is just like low or high um and then volume is like loudness or quietness and then we have some objects that people have designed and created over thousands of years which um you know if you do something to them uh, and if you're good at it, then you can make them make sounds that people like. All right, so as, uh, at some point, like uh, in between when electricity was discovered and, um, you know, we could manipulate electricity, uh, but, bef you know, after that, but before computers were invented, um, people figured out this, how, you know, people already knew how sound works, but then they figured out how electricity works. And there's, it's kind of a, uh, you know, a uh, useful coincidence. Electricity also happens to be a wave. Uh, electromagnetic energy in general uh, it, uh, are waves. Um, so they came up with a way to take one type of wave and convert it to the other. Uh, and you've definitely seen this before. Uh, so like, for example, the thing that is in your computer right now that is playing my voice to you, or the thing in my computer that I'm speaking into and it's interpret, you know, it, it, it's taking my voice, like what I'm saying and putting it in the computer and sending it over to you. Those two things, speakers and microphones, um, that's what they're for. They're for converting electrical signal into uh, audio or converting a wave, audio wave into electricity. So like when I speak into a microphone, something in the microphone, similar to our eardrum, something in the microphone vibrate, like catches that wave, vibrates, and then it's connected to some electrical component which takes that wave and then sends it down some wire. Um, so once we had those two things, once we had microphones and once we had speakers, that opened up a lot of possibilities. That's like, you know, back in the 1920s, 1930s, or some, you know, some that sort of period when audio recordings first started happening. Um, and then, you know, it would, the whole world was different after that. Uh, you see all the, you know, the music all over the world started to get recorded. People started to distribute records. Uh, people figured out ways to put, the, put that music onto um, vinyl, you know, those uh, circular vinyl records. Um, so it just like opened up a lot of possibilities. Um, so that was cool. And then a, a little, a, a couple decades after that, people, discovered not only can you like record capture the waves from the air and make uh and make recordings and not only can you uh, replay those recordings but you can also make something new um and that's what this big thing on the right here is it's, it's something called an analog synthesizer so all this thing is is if you look at it's just like a whole bunch of knobs um it's just this big machine which uh basically generates an electrical signal uh, that's what all those knobs for are changing a little different properties of the electrical signal um, and then uh, at the bottom you see the keys basically you use a combination of the keys and those knobs to make some sound um, and this was like developed probably i think 60s the 1960s 1970s and so uh, i don't know if you guys know about like music from that time period but at some point music kind of changed it used to be all made with like traditional musical instruments um pianos guitars string instruments you know saxophones brass all that type of thing but it, you know right around here you start to hear these kind of futuristic sounds in like music um especially in the 1970s 1980s and what that was were these analog synthesizers um, anytime you hear like, you know, the sounds that kind of sound like zap, zappy or alien or it kind of, um, I don't even know how to describe them, but basically uh, different than like a normal musical instrument. That's what uh, analog synthesizers did. Uh, and, you know, those were, those were useful uh, for a while, but uh, 
one issue with them is that one is that usually they're big like this uh, and then two they are they uh they're complex it takes uh, a lot of expertise to operate and use these and then three uh they are they're you know once it's built this is all it can do it can you can change you can tweak these knobs and uh play the keys and you can you know you can make whatever's possible with that but that's it if you want to make a change to how it works you'd have to add some more components and literally physically build more things and put them in there so um a couple of decades after that computers became ubiquitous like every computers became ubiquitous or uh they became present in you know most people's uh a lot of people's homes just regular personal computers um and uh so now we have computers. Uh, before we only had, there were only these analog synthesizer things, analog audio stuff. Um, now computers exist, but they don't. They still didn't have a uh, a way to make music with computers, really. Um, and it's still not obvious how you would, you know, how would you convert this to something in a computer? Because com uh, if you remember from some of the stuff that's been talked about in past weeks, um, computers are a little. They work a little differently. They can only and they can only understand zeros and ones, um, these like binary numbers. So how could you convert that into a wave? How could you make how could you make a wave into zeros and ones? A wave is like there's so many values, and it's not just zero and one. It's going all between here. Uh, so, uh, so very smart people came up with these components uh, called digital analog converters and analog digital converters. Um, and what they do is they take uh, information in one form, like a, let's say uh, information in the form of an electrical signal, like on a wire, and then they can convert it into digital zero and one information for the computer to understand, and also vice versa. Uh, so this is digital analog. So like let's say you have some information in a computer, a bunch of zeros and ones, uh, like this is a zero or one, this one's a zero or one, this one's a zero or one. You have a bunch of them. The digital analog converter takes all of those. Um, it's a circuit. It's an electrical circuit. It does some, does a bunch of stuff, math and so on, um, um, operations on those inputs, and then it outputs the uh, electrical signal. And if you remember earlier, we talking about the um, microphones and stuff. You, if you have an electrical signal that represents sound, all you have to do is hook it up to a speaker, and then you have sound. Um, so if we can put together uh, the right set of zeros and ones, um, we can make any sound that's possible to make. Um, and it might not seem like a very like powerful statement or like it might not seem like I'm saying much, but that's actually really a really powerful statement. If we can put together the right set of zeros and ones, any sound that's literally possible in the universe can be generated. Um, and uh, what that gives us is like so much more possibilities than just these traditional musical instruments. If you're playing a violin, like I used, you know, I used to play violin in school. You have the only real possible sounds you can make are all the notes that go from the, you know, all four the four strings and all the notes that go from the bottom to the top there. But it's really you can only make it sound like a violin. You can't make a violin sound like anything else. It has its own sound. Same thing with the saxophone, same thing with the piano. Um, but so, I mean, they're very beautiful instruments. You can make like really amazing music with them, but you're limited by what that physical thing can do. That violin, it's a piece of wood that, that um, you know, generates these sound waves through the drawing of hair across the strings. That's it, that's all it can do. But with a computer, again, if you put together the right set of zeros and ones, you can make any sound that's possible to make. Um, the hard part is that first half though, putting together the right set of zeros and ones. So uh, now I wanna talk about like some of the tools that have been developed uh, since those times I was talking about uh, to um, make music on a computer. And these are tools that are like used widely today. Um, okay, so uh, there's this format called uh, MIDI, this protocol called MIDI uh, and I, Forgot to look up what it stands for, so I'm gonna look that up right now. But um, 
Let's see. Musical instrument digital interface. Okay, so what MIDI is, is it's this uh, protocol. You can kind of compare it to, um, I don't know if you're familiar with like USB. USB, like if you have like a USB port on your computer, um, it can also be compared to Ethernet if you're familiar with like the Ethernet cables that, um, you know, you plug into your computers for internet. It's kind of like that, but it's specifically for uh, musical information. So what MIDI is, is you have something that looks like this on the left, like a simple kind of keyboard kind of input. And when you plug it into a computer, each note that you press gets understood and interpreted by the computer. So if I press this second key, which is like, let's say the, uh, in music there's notes, right? So like, let's say it's a key of, or it's a key that means F sharp in music. The computer will understand that and be able to save it, replay play it, like make that sound or so on. Um, and, but, and MIDI is not something that's just for pianos though. It, even though the, all the example people use is always piano, MIDI, you can have a, like a violin, an electrical violin, which outputs MIDI information. You can have an electrical uh, bass, um, even brass instruments, which output MIDI. Uh, and then so the computer can understand it and save it uh, and like replay it later. Um, and to be clear, it's, uh, it's not making the sound. So if I just have this, this little uh, MIDI keyboard here and I just press it and it's not connected to the computer, nothing happens. It's not, a, it's not a piano, it's not a keyboard. All it is, is just a thing that when you press that button, it generates that MIDI message, which gets sent to the computer it's connected to. Um, and um, in, the, in the modern day, uh, we have software that is used that uh, it's been developed to put all the things I mentioned together and some more. So, you have MIDI, you have like something that you can use to input audio, you have uh, synthesis, you have like um, something you use to like generate different types of sounds, you have like different types of, uh, you know, virtual instruments, you have um, something I haven't mentioned so far, which is rhythm, like, you know, when you make music, it's not just a bunch of notes, it also, you have to put them in time, uh, you have to be in the right order, and that type of thing, so like, encoding the rhythm of the notes, all those things. They're put together in these pieces of software called digital audio workstations. It just, it's one place where uh, somebody who wants to make a piece of music or uh, not just make the music, but also, you know, um, mass mix and master it, uh, which is a process that happens for like professional music. Um, there's just this software that people use for this purpose. Um, and uh, I'm gonna demo uh, what it looks like and like how people use it, uh, how it generates the sound, just to kind of like illustrate some of the things I put in these slides. Um, but before I do that, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask while I'm gonna switch over to my uh, digital audio workstation. Um, it'll take a couple seconds. All right, can everybody still, still see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what, uh, what I have here is a digital audio workstation. It's called FL Studio. It's pretty common. Uh, a lot of the music you might listen to, like if you listen to popular music nowadays, is made on either this exact one or something like it. So uh, what I have open here in this window, window here uh, is uh, something called an oscillating synthesizer. Um, and so what it does is uh, it generates a wave and you can actually see the, the shape of the wave that it makes here. Like we can select different shapes. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play, uh, I have a MIDI, I have one of these, those MIDI keyboards I showed you guys, I have one next to me. So I'm gonna play uh, each of these different waves, sounds waves and show you what they like sound like, let, sound like. Um, let me know if you can hear this because uh, I might have to change like my, my audio volume and stuff, but. One second. Can you hear that? Yeah. Okay, cool. So 
And then this here is a, 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 something that visualizes the wave for us. So you can actually see the shape when I play it. Um, sorry, one second. This is, again, I mentioned earlier, this is a sine wave. It's this like kind of smooth, curvy wave. Uh, and then the sound it makes. It's like this kind of smooth sounding uh, beep sort of sound. Like it's, it's, it doesn't have, like when I play one note, there's not much, uh, there's, it's just kind of that one note. Uh, and to illustrate what I mean, uh, I'm gonna play this square wave and show you what the difference is. It's a lot more, uh, I don't know, like abrasive. It's kind of more shocking to the ear. Um, and it's because of the shape of the wave. Um, it's like harsher, more sharp. Uh, and then there's this other type. I don't know the exact name, but it's like this shape here. If I play that, it's, it's not quite the square wave. It's a little different. And then we have these here, which are sawtooth, uh, different types of sawtooth waves. And then this one, which is a, a sawtooth wave with a this like vertical line here. Uh, so yeah, this is just to show, just kind of illustrate synthesis. What it what what we mean by synthesis? It, these are just electrical wave signals, but then when you play them as audio, they get um, they sound a certain way. Uh, and then this here is noise. Uh, so if, if I play this. There's no wave, there's no, uh, there's no frequency. It's just all different frequencies added up together. And it's just white, it's called white noise. Um, so uh, this is an example of one type of synthesizer that can be used in these digital audio workstations. Uh, you can also add these things together. So there's three here. So if I turn this one on and turn this one on, I can actually play a, a sine wave, a square wave, and a sawtooth wave all at the same time. So people add these up in different ways, uh, not just three, they add up four, five, seven, a hundred, a thousand, uh, different frequencies, different characteristics, and they can make basically any sound that you can imagine. Uh, here it's a really simplified version, so it, it kind of sounds like gimmicky or like a toy, um, but you can add it up in such a way that you can make something that sounds like a real instrument, um, and I'll show that here. So this is another synthesizer, but it's meant just for synthesizing, making something sound like piano. And if you, if I play this one, you can hear it's like, it sounds like a piano. I mean, it's not perfect. It, it's, it kind of sounds like a sort of a weird muted piano. So it's not like the best synthesizer that exists for pianos, but it's, it's pretty good. Like it sounds pretty close uh, for a grand piano. Similarly, you can see it's like relatively close. You might be fooled. If somebody played that for you, you might think it was an actual piano. Uh, and this is just like sort of a simple one. People make much more complex ones that sound like indistinguishable. You can't tell the difference. It just sounds like a real musical instrument. Um, okay, so so I've shown that you can play uh, play things that sound like real instruments. You can build sounds that don't sound like real instruments. Um, and then you might wonder like, okay, you can make a sound, but like a song is more than just a single sound. It's like, you have to lay it out over time. Uh, it also lets you do that. So if you have like, um, let's say I have this piano sound here. One thing I can do. What I just did there is I recorded me putting in those sounds and then it laid them out on this like kind of drawing board here. Uh, and an interesting thing that I can do now that I have these sounds laid out on this drawing board, different notes on this keyboard is I can move them around. So let's say I messed up. Let's say I, I played like here, I played this one a little bit late. If I want to fix it, I can just move it a little bit. 
and this like from left to right it's like time so if i want to just fix where I put things i can i can draw i can literally draw my music and then when i play it back again it's like saved and i can change aspects of it and so on um this is what made this is an illustration of the midi thing i was talking about midi the thing when i press a key it inputs and then it can be saved replayed um changed and that type of thing so if i can make little pieces like this i can add them up together uh lay them out over the course of a whole song put them put different sounds together and then that's literally how a song is built uh no, nothing more than that it's just a, a series of all these different sounds laid out over time repeated uh, and then saved and then you have a song all right um there was one other thing i wanted to show okay yeah uh okay so we've seen adding up different little waves to make a sound we've seen something that sounds like a piano uh, now I'm going to go to something a little bit more complex. So, you know, once people finished making things that sounded like real instruments, uh, they realized the thing I said earlier in that one slide, if you put the right set of zeros and ones together, you can make any sound possible. So, you know, people realized is there's more than just the traditional instruments. You can make way more. You can make things that you could never do with a normal person and a musical instrument. Um, Example of that is what I'll play right now. It's like, uh, this is a synthesizer that has something in it called an arpeggiator. And what that is, is when you play, when I just play one key on the, on the keyboard here, it'll play a whole bunch of notes. Um, and the way it does that is like programmatically, it like goes up and down and up and down in a way that is uh, within the same key as the note you play. Um, so it still sounds good, but you could never, you could never do this uh, if you were like a, even the best piano player in the world could never like really do this because it's just too fast or too complex. So I'll, I'll kind of show you what I mean. So if I just press one key, that's like a bunch of different notes being played. I was only play, pressing one key there. I didn't play all those different things I just pressed. But then if I press two at the same time, like this, if I press three, I press like, or so it's it's uh it's nothing like crazy it's just it showed i'm doing that to illustrate to you that it's like you can make things that wouldn't be possible otherwise it wouldn't be possible with an instrument it wouldn't be you can't recreate that really i mean unless you had like four different people playing different keyboards you know that type of thing you can do things that just wouldn't be possible with without a computer uh, and, you know, a lot of the music you hear today it utilizes that type of thing. Um, and it's pretty fun. And like, you know, if you like music, it's, it's like, it's like a tool that just makes it way easier and more, more, uh, more a process of creating what's in your mind as opposed to creating just what's possible with whatever instrument you happen to learn. Um, is in here oh and then, and then another thing is uh i i didn't really emphasize it much but there's you know like you can also it's not just about creating a sound or uh generating a sound you can also record them right so uh you know in, in a real song you'll have some instrumental that is can consist of a bunch of these synthesizers or instruments or whatever but you may want to include some real music, uh, sound from the real world. Like, let's say there's a singer. There's no way you could generate a, a singer's voice on a computer um, perfectly, really. So you still want to record the singer. So you would record them with a microphone, and then you'd bring that recording into here, and you could just put it on top. Just It's just audio. You just put it on top the same way you would the rest of these other sounds. Um, and not just a person's voice, but like let's say a drum sound from real life or a, uh, an instrument sound from real life. Uh, so people, they put together all these packs of samples from the real world. So you can combine real instrument sounds, generated synthesized instrument sounds in whatever way you want. So I have like these collections of all these real instruments like flutes, 
harps, uh, different, you know, all sorts of different instruments from all over all over the world, that type of thing. You can, can just combine them in different ways and it's almost like you're playing that instrument, but it's just you have a little sample, a little piece, uh, and you can put them put them together in different ways to create different things. Uh, and again, like that would never be possible uh, without a computer. I mean, you could go find somebody who plays the sitar and get them to play that note for you, but that would probably be pretty hard to do, like <laughs> compared to just clicking something on a computer. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, that's, you know, put, you can put together already recorded samples, music that, or uh, sounds that you created with one of these synthesizers or one of the more complex ones, uh, sounds that are meant to emulate real instruments, and then even recordings of like real people and voices and that type of things. And then they just get laid out. Uh, you put, you know, draw how you want the music to be laid out. And then at the end, you have a song. Um, does anybody have any questions about this? Like, what, you know, what, any of the things I've talked about, like how this works or that type of thing? And it's cool if you don't. I mean, there's like a bunch of stuff here. There's no, not necessarily any obvious questions. Um, but uh, yeah, this, so again, this is how actual music is made like today. So, if you just take any random song you might have heard recently that was you know, created, not, not an old song, obviously, but that was created recently, uh, it almost certainly went through a digital audio workstation. Even if it was by a, you know, like an instrumental band who they all play real instruments, it would have been recorded and laid out in uh, one of these digital audio workstations. Um, and yeah, that's how people make uh, music on the computer. Quick question. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to know what program do you use? I might have missed this, but the name of this program here? Yeah. Yeah, it's called uh, FL Studio. Um they're the most I think the most common ones you'll see for this purpose are this FL Studio. There's something called Ableton people use. There's a software called uh Logic people use. And then there's also different ones that have different specialties. So uh, if I, you know, like there's, let's say I made a bunch of different sounds, played them, uh, and they sounded good to me, uh, I'd be done with making the song. Uh, but then there's also this process of, uh, in professional music, to make it sound good on your, you know, your iPhone or to make it sound good on a car speaker and in a concert. Uh, it has to be, uh, there's this process that has to be done called mixing and mastering. And so they have separate digital audio workstations that let you do mixing and mastering or that are better at that. Um, you can do the, do it here too. So uh, to illustrate what I mean by mixing. Um, so I have this sound here. Uh, I think there's already some saved sounds here. Okay, so this sound. Okay, so I have that little riff or whatever for using that sound. Um, and let me... Uh, So, okay, so I'll play that and then I'll add something on top of that using this other one that I played earlier. So I'll record this. Sorry, okay. Okay, so now I have this little one, one, uh, one little block that contains two different sounds playing at the same time. I have that like uh, oscillator synthesizer from the waves, and then I have this little other one I just played on top of it. So if I play them, it sounds like. And then if I go here, there's something called a mixer. So if we look at this little bar, it shows the audio, the uh, level, the volume of that first, uh, that first one, uh, which is just this. And then if I do 
this one, this is the volume of the second part. So I put them together, they sound like this. But let's say uh, I, you know, I, depending on my own tastes, I want this part to be quieter. Bring it down and bring this part down, make this part louder and so on. So that's what's called mixing. Uh, it's really simple in this two track case, but you might have 20 different tracks. You might have a drum, a guitar, a piano, and all these different instruments. And so this process of mixing, making it sound right, and then also after what you've mixed everything, uh, there's, it gets all mixed into one track and then it's making that one track sound good. That's called mixing and mastering. Uh, and so like this, you know, I could do it here, but then there's other workstations that are more common for that. Um, but yeah, anyway, to answer your original question, this is FL Studio, what it's called. Okay, thank you. No Any other questions? Hey, Manuel. Yeah. Can you tell them, you know, if there are courses in college um, teaching this kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I meet, when I went to college, I majored in um, electrical and computer engineering. Um, and one of my concentrations, uh, concentration being like, uh, you choose like a, a set of classes to focus on. One of my concentrations was signal processing. So signal processing is like the field uh, that basically, uh, if you remember the slides I showed you earlier with the waves and the characteristics of those waves, like the pitch and the volume uh, and so on. Uh, it's the field that deals with that, the mathematics of that. Um, the mathematics of doing this like synthesis here, of generating these waves, adding them together, analyzing them, even of making this type of visualization here where if I play it, it shows that all of that is signal processing. So I took one class actually called digital audio processing and that's where I learned the, the science and engineering behind this. Um, so, you know, it's interesting both from an artistic perspective, but it also is a whole field like, Making, making systems that generate sound in a better way or capture it in a better way, or, um, or even writing the software, like the people who wrote this software are, you know, have to be experts in digital signal processing. Um, so yeah, there are definitely uh, lots of college classes that, are, that deal with like the things underlying this. Um, as far as actually using softwares, um, I don't know if there's any classes. Unless it was like a music class or something, I, I don't think that um, there would be many like classes teaching you how to use these. Um, but there's no, it's this isn't this is not a science. It's you know, it's just like a matter of making whatever somebody wants to make. So yeah, if you were interested in the underlying uh, science of this, it would be, you would look up uh, digital audio processing for the like underlying stuff. It's very, very math heavy is one, one thing I'll say. It's uh, um, these waves, all of them, the square waves, the sawtooths, the sine waves, uh, to, to understand them, there's like a lot of math involved, um, physics too. Uh, the good thing is that they have abstracted that away from us um, in terms of for the people actually using the software to make the music. It helps to understand it, but you don't necessarily have to be doing all that math in order to actually uh, make this music on the computer.
All right, uh, Dad, I think that was that was all their questions. Thank you, Mano. Yeah, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Manuel, you're done? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, um, I was supposed to tell them about next week, but I can tell them tomorrow. Okay. I didn't realize you were done. But I, anyway, thank you for uh, presenting, and I think uh, that's interesting. I'm sure they uh, learned something out of it. All right, Emmanuel. All right, everybody. Uh, hey, Nuria, sorry. Um, I think most of them left already. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hi, Lum Lum. I, I see your name, Lum. Yeah, hello, Gashaswas. How are you? Good. It was an interesting topic. It was definitely new. Oh, though. good, good. Yeah, you probably have to do something like that. You know, just let me know if you have any topic and I uh, will line you up. Maybe next, uh, maybe the mountain and presentation in Madrid. Hello, yeah, high school I play me out but then. Okay, um, you can do that. You know, like we have C, uh, say, you know, C programming, but uh, uh, we can give you how long do you think you'll take? Uh, that one should be like 10 20 minutes or okay, yeah, yeah I think uh, that, that should be you should be able to accommodate that. So you can do it like three o'clock tomorrow. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So three to three, uh, you know, whatever takes time. Okay. And then uh, Maria can do C programming afterwards. Right. Yeah, sure. Like link um salala salasun like of refer salamiada go bazoom. Yeah. Yeah. If you give them some guidelines and say, okay, if you need if you need more, these are the uh, links. Definitely, yeah. Also, you know, like training on even a most of all, soon's come to us, non-zi and then programming or to my